Uh, this is loric, where body proper is present. At the top, there are, there are cilia. In circular fashion, they are moving wheel like. That's why they are called wheel animal cubes. Here, there is a foot. A foot contains three toes. And often this structure is retractile when you see that animals under microscope. So that smaller animals called rotifers also, the excretory organ is protonephridia. So larva of annelids and mollusks and rotifers, the excretory organs have protonephridia. And when you come to arthropods, the early group of animals like king crab, King crab, there is coxal glands. We call them as coxal glands. It's a simple gland. Actually, they're called saccate nephridia. Nephridia, this is this is nephridium. And the same nephridium, when it forms the sac like structure, it's called saccate nephridium. Saccate nephridium includes coxal glands and antenary glands. Based on where it is opening and where it is located. Now, if they are opening near the coxa, coxa is the first part of the leg. They are called coxal glands. If they are opening at the base of antenna, they are called antenary glands. Both are saccate nephridia. You can see in case of crustaceans, crustaceans includes prawns. So in certain animals like prawns, in crustaceans we have antenary glands. Antenary glands are also called as green glands, both same. So at the base of the second pair of antennae, in case of prawns, you will see those glands are opening. They are either green in color, they are called green glands. In certain crustaceans, they are, they are called maxillary glands because they open at the base of maxilla. The structure is same. They are all saccate nephridia. The coxal glands, the antenary glands, the maxillary, all shell glands. Maxillary glands are also called shell glands. They are attached to the shell, shell glands. They are opening near maxilla, maxillary glands. Some crustaceans you will see maxillary glands. And you can see in arachnids, there are coxal glands and malpigian tubules. We have both. See, early group of arachnids. Arachnids include scorpions, spiders, ticks and mites. Scorpions, spiders, ticks and mites. So, familiar group includes scorpions and spiders. In scorpions, we find both. Though in spiders, in primitive forms, we find coxal glands. And the advanced terrestrial forms, they generally contain the Malpigian tubules. So in arachnids we find both. But you, when you come to the terrestrial forms, the centipedes, millipedes, insects, so all the advanced terrestrial forms, the centipedes, millipedes and insects, again it is Malpigian tubules. The excretory organs are Malpigian tubules. Malpigian tubules, they are always attached at the junction. They are, they are opening at the junction between midgut and hindgut. They dump the waste into hindgut. And then the, it's a method of conservation of water. Now, if you see echinodermid, mullus we have already discussed earlier. Now, echinodermata. Echinodermata, it is diffusion through body wall. Now, echino, echino means spiny, body has got spines. 
and most of the areas uh, spines are present. Now, places where spines are absent, you can see exchange of gases, you can also see diffusion of base. Ammonia diffuses outside. In most of the books, they give two feet. This is because most of the body contains spines and on two feet they, there are no spines. So they, they say the excretory organs are two feet, the respiratory organs are two feet. But the respiration and excretion occurs at any place where there are no spines in echinodermid. Correctly speaking, it is through body wall diffusion. Now when you come to hemichordata, hemichordata like bellnoglosis, you can see this is the stomachoid. So in case of hemichondrites like bellnoglosis, body is divided into proboscis, collar and trunk. So this is proboscis, this is a collar and followed by trunk, a long trunk. Now this is the mouth region, the mouth opens into buccal cavity. The buccal cavity opens into pharynx. Hmm? This is mouth, mouth opens into buccal cavity which opens into pharynx. Now you can see a projection from here, from the buccal cavity you can see projection. This projection is called buccal diverticulum. Previously it was thought to be an autocot. At one point of time it was supposed to be an autocot. So, the word hemichordate, half chordates, small, not a cord like structure, they thought. But today we know it is not related to not a cord. Not a cord originates from embryonic mesoderm. But this stomachoid originates from ectoderm because buccal cavity is lined by ectoderm. So embryonic origin is different. Above this, you can see that is the area of location of heart. In the proboscis, you can see heart. The anterior part of the heart, you can see a group of glomeruli, a network of capillaries. It is also called proboscis gland. So, the anterior region of heart, you can see a network of blood capillaries. That network of blood capillaries is called as glomerulus. So, glomerulus is the excretory organ. It is also called proboscis gland. Both same. Now heart, it is connected with blood vessels, so blood coming from heart, so it comes into that network of capillaries, glomerulus, glomerulus collect the waste and dump it into coelomic fluid of proboscis. So from that proboscis, there is a small pore on the left side, so waste are dumped outside through that pore. Hmm. So glomerulus or proboscis gland, a gland present anterior to heart, above the stomachoid, inside the proboscis, it's called proboscis gland, you see that's the excretory organs in hemichordata. When you come to urochordates, in case of urochordates, there is a neural gland and there are also nephrocytes. This is 
the brachial siphon. This is the atrial siphon. We have got two siphons. The true brachial siphon, water enters through atrial siphon, water leaves. Now, here we have a reduced nerve ganglion. Nervous system is represented in the form of small ganglion. Very close to that, there is a gland. That gland is called neural gland. It is nowhere related to nervous system. But you still call it as neural gland because it's very close to the nerve ganglion. So it collects waste. But there are, there are cells in the blood which collects the waste. The cells are called as nephrocytes. So cells present in blood called nephrocytes bring the waste. So they give it to a neural gland. Neural gland collect the waste and push it outside. So we got both as the excretory organs in case of urocardites. Then when you come to cephalocardite, cephalocardite, cephalocardite includes amphioxus or brachiostome. They are commonly called lancelets. Again there you will find attached to the pharynx in the atrial cavity, you can find protonephridia. The protonephridia, they are actually protonephridia in the form of solenocytes. In case of platyhelminthes, there are flame cells in the form of the protonephridia or in the form of flame cells. The main function of flame cells there is osmoregulation. Much of the excretion occurs through body wall in case of flat wounds. In cephalocardites, now cephalocardites, cephalocardites excretory organs are protonephridia. We saw protonephridia in other groups also. In platyhelminthes, protonephridia, they are in the form of flame cells. But here, in case of cephalocardites, protonephridia, they are in the form of solenocytes. Solen. See, solen means tube-like structure. So one side it is closed. That's why it's called proto. It's a tube-like structure. That's why it's called nephridia. It's closed on one side, so-called protonephridia. And it is in the form of a tube. That's why it's called solen. Solen means tube. Side means cell. So this side it gathers waste and it push it, pushes it outside. Now cephalocardites, example for cephalocardites is amphioxus, branchiostome. So attached to the pharyngeal wall inside the atrium, you can see protonephridia in the form of solenocytes. Now when you come to vertebrates, vertebrates from cyclostomata, fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals, in these groups of vertebrates, we have kidneys as excretory organs. Now kidneys, uh, we have used the same word for mollusks also, kidneys. But this kidneys and that kidneys are entirely different, structurally different. That kidneys are actually metanephridia. Now these kidneys are much more advanced, they contain nephrons inside. But all kidneys are not of structural same or not structurally same. Because protonephridia, there are three types of kidneys. Pronephros, mesonephros, metanephros. Pronephros generally is not seen in adults and even if it is present, it is not excretory, it is a lymphoid tissue. So that means in vertebrates, adult vertebrates, you either find mesonephros or metanephros. In some groups, cyclostomata, fishes, amphibians, there is mesonephros. In that group, embryonically, first there is pronephros, but replaced by mesonephros in adults. The remaining vertebrates, the higher vertebrates, the reptiles, birds, mammals. In adult stages, they have metanephric kidneys. But in embryonic state, first they have pronephros, replaced by mesonephros. But further again, they are replaced by metanephros. So in adults, you will only find metanephric kidneys.